Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This message is only for the called and chosen. All others, as you will soon see, it doesn't apply to them. Allow me to ask you a question, gentle called and chosen. When you read John 15 and 18, what do you perceive? I can tell you my perception, but to get the fullness of my theory, it would be best to explain why we read it. Before I start, I have told you before, I don't think my job is to be a bearer of warm and fuzzy news. Speaking to you smooth things just ain't my bag. Why? Because everybody wants to hear good things. Heck, I do. But I also want to hear the things that will allow me at least the opportunity for salvation, even if I hate it. I know we have used this verse before, but this time with another perception. The scriptures are truly alive to me. Saying that, John 15 and 18, quote, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. Stop! We already talked before about being liked, but we really didn't touch on being hated yet. I'm not talking about being hated among the wolves and men, though. I'm talking about being hated by those who are behind the wolves and men. If the world is owned by demonic forces, they are the love givers of this world. Everyone and everything are just instruments to that end. But let's continue. Quote, But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, stop! This means you didn't pick him. If you are one of the lucky, he picked you. Big difference than white Jesus. But let's finish this up. Therefore, the world hateth you. Example, simple logic. Again, if we know the world is under the influence of demonic forces, with the power to influence people and situations, don't you think they hate you too? And everybody knows what happens when a bully hates the pipsqueak, right? This is how you know Christianity is a fluke. How? Because there is no way the bully will allow you to receive help 24-7 in the comfort of your own living room. I'm talking about TVN and sort. Without cutting the cable wire, just like we see in the movies. But if you are still not catching my drift, maybe this will put you on the path. Isaiah 59 and 15, quote, Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. What? Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. Example, this is why it seems Murphy's Law is in full effect in your lives. Those who control the atmosphere, the situation, hate you. This is why you can't even get a simple oil change without there being a freaking problem while you see street urchins come and go with impunity. Please remember, Yah is back at his crib cold chilling. That's hip hop slang for relaxing in an extreme measure. Waiting on us to cry unto him. He said this in a number of places. Yeah, I know he has a protector so the evildoers are not able to do a Hitler on us, wink, wink. But other than that, God is letting them have their way with our wayward asses. Get your minds right, people. Isaiah 54 and 17, quote, No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Stop! It doesn't say no weapon shall be formed, does it? Nope. Thank y'all. He does that thing that he does so well and makes their intended trap turn out for your betterment. Think about it logically and log logistically for a second. If we already know the evildoers wanted to sift Peter like wheat and was a lion crouching by the door for him, 
What on earth do you think they want to do to the called and chosen? At crunch time. Let's just say roses and chocolates are not on the menu for you. Nor the smooth lifestyle white Jesus has promised those who have picked him to come into their hearts. Can you say possession? If I'm not mistaken, Dracula had to be asked in too. But anyway, yeah, I know about where it says he will make those that hate you be at peace with you. But they still hate your butt. Don't get it twisted. And everybody knows if you slip out of their clutches and traps at this time, it only emboldens them to try even harder the next time. We live in a sick, sad world, people. Now just imagine the rage the spiritual heathens who are in charge of the earthly heathens have for you when Yah turns the table on them. This is the reason why you eclipsed the law of compound probability and freak accidents when you had no skin in the game whatsoever. Having this small amount of understanding in a non-understanding world, if you can plan things and they go as planned, the world don't hate you. If life's grand and you YOLO, the world don't hate you. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Charlie. That's hip hop talk for you only live once. If your life mirrors the if your life mirrors the stereotypical 2.5 children and the white picket fence, the world don't hate you. If you, as a young man, hasn't heard "shut up, punk, don't question authority" in one fashion or another, the world don't hate you. If you have an investment banker who told you it was the best time for you to roll your 401k into an IRA. The world don't hate you. If you got a record deal, etc., the world don't hate you. If you need a lawyer to protect your brand, the world don't hate you. If you hold public office, civil office, or anything that as that's associated with it, the world don't hate you. If you can stand on the bully, that's hip hop talk for Boulevard, and spew much deserved now. Yet erroneous, venomous hate willy-nilly wonton, the world don't hate you. If you got friends with names like Biff, Chad, Thurston, Richard, anything Eastern European, or Chip, the world don't hate you. I know Saul told you, well, let's check it out because I don't want to misquote our beloved brother. You see how easy that was for me to say? And y'all all, all know I don't like him. Well, same thing with Peter. But that's for another video. But as far as this video is concerned, here is, a, here is another one of those versus Captain Yazura from the planet Amenanus. Wait, wait a minute. I don't think that's where he's from. But he was one of those false of uh, the false prophet crew I was talking about in the last video. I noticed he started the video at the tail end of what we are about to read. I can just imagine what he was using this passage for. Romans 13, 1 through 6. Quote, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Stop! Is Paul talking about the high holy ones the Romans were praying to like on Mars Hill? Or is he talking about Mr. Obama? Either way, this is a false doctrine. But let's not tarry on such small things like Saul being a demon manifested in the flesh. Let's continue. Quote, For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Stop! I'm perplexed. And if you can see, I'm scratching my head. No, the evildoers are not doing the will of Yah. They are in opposition of Yah. He gave us over to things that were not good. He gave us to the spirit of Vitaline. But she has gone too far with us. These demons are doing their own thing. If it was not true, why would he have to put hooks into God's jaws to make him come and fight? Why does he plead with the high holy ones to judge man fairly? The entire concept of the evildoers doing the will of Yah is blasphemous at best. 
Yes, I know Yah has the power to make them do his bidding. Yes, I know Yah has the power to do all. But I also know, and the scriptures attest, Yah will create his own evil in heaven, not command his nemesis destined for hell. I, now, I know it sounds good, and I even see your logic. But upon further review of the scriptures and world events and prophecies, that point of view is blasphemous. But let's continue. Don't worry, I'm going to let the beat rock a while. Quote, Whosoever resisteth the ordinances of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Stop! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just got to say this. I know some of you out there that twist this verse to think this is an example of Saul being in favor of the laws of Moses. Question. Name a situation in Saul's history where the heathens ever obeyed the ordinance of Yah. Again, unless you want to believe Saul was taking rib-shattering body blows because everyone else had abandoned the law and he was the only champion left, he was referring to obeying those he perceived ordained by his God. How do I know this? Well, let's continue, shall we? Well, now that you have the perception I am projecting, Saul is an antichrist, hey, why beat around the bush about it? I will, I will try not to interrupt until the end, but I can't promise you anything. The egregiousness is so egregious. Quote, For rulers, see, I told you, are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Would thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, and if you really understand, he's talking about listening to Yah. Be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God. A revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must need be subject, not only for wrath, but also for consciousness sake. Example, this sucker is always talking about his damn conscience. Again, I can just imagine what that colored Jamaican street preacher actually said to that pretty little chick. I know, I know. This didn't have anything to do with the overall video, but I didn't want Buddy to think that I had forgotten about it. Hope you don't mind. As always, thank you for listening to this video, and look for the next.